Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a what's new at the drugstore, mainly focused on two new drugstore mascaras that seem to be all the rage. I wanna give you guys my opinions on a brand new tubing mascara and a brand new mascara that is supposed to be giving you fall slash effect. So this is gonna be the last what's new at the drugstore of 2022. I will most likely not upload next week. My husband's off, I'm off, the kids are out of school probably my last video of the year. So let's go ahead and talk through some of these products and give you my somewhat controversial opinions on these mascaras. First up is a new primer by e.l.f. This is another version of their e.l.f. Power Grip, which is like a really gripping primer, meaning that it feels pretty sticky and it's meant to grab onto the foundation, make it last on your skin for a longer period of time. I feel like these types of formulas, you either love it or you hate it. There's no in between. And by the way, self tan fail last night, so please ignore my orange hand. This one has 4% niacinamide in it, so it's meant to be a little bit more hydrating than the original formula. So my first impression of this is that it really didn't feel very much different to the original Power Grip. Maybe slightly more smooth, but once it dried down, to me at least, it felt very similar. So I like the 4% niacinamide. It's always good to have some skincare in your makeup but I feel like if you own the original Power Grip primer and what you're looking for out of this primer is not the skincare, it's the gripping onto your makeup, it's the making your makeup last. As much as I really, really do like this, I don't feel like it's super different from the original one, but again, I'm gonna continue playing around with it, see if my opinion changes over time. First impression wise, it felt a lot like the blue Power Grip. Okay, next up is a new powder by Milani. It's the Milani Conceal and Perfect Blur Out Powder. This retails for $12.99. A lot of these Milani products are pretty high up there in terms of price point, so don't love that. The shade Translucent, it claims to be a weightless, ultra finely milled powder, transparent universal shade to flatter in capital letters all skin tones and it is talc free. It preserves the radiant effects of cream because it's ultra finely milled. Okay, everyone is up in arms about this Milani tubing mascara. I know that that's the most popular recent release of theirs, but oh my gosh, this powder is incredible. The way that this blurred my pores is unmatched. I am pretty shocked by this. My first impression of this is incredibly positive. This was my favorite product that I tried in this video, like jaw dropping type powder. Applied it with a damp beauty sponge, the same one that I used to blend out my concealer. So there's a little bit of concealer on there. I didn't use a ton of product, but then I just pressed it into my skin and it is so, so good. It was in this type of packaging where you have to lift this to reveal the product. I found, even though this is supposed to make it cleaner, it kind of made it messier for me because when I pushed in on here, it kind of went everywhere, as you can probably see. But Packaging aside, the actual powder here was fantastic. I don't love the price point, but but I mean, this is incredible. Another exciting Milani release, they released this Milani Stay Put Liquid Brow Wax, and in the same exact packaging, you guys know I tried the Stay Put Liquid Eyeliner. I wasn't a fan. Some of you said that if you use a different brush to apply it, it goes on better. Um, I just personally feel like there's so many products to choose from that if I have to work at it, I'm just gonna pick something else. Um, so I didn't like the liquid eyeliner. I thought it was too hard to work with. So when I looked at this, I was kind of immediately put off because, unfairly, because the packaging just reminded me so much of the eyeliner. But this is the brow gel I have on right now. It goes on like very similar to the NYX Thick It Stick It. A lot of brow gels tend to, when you push up your brows, when you move them into place, then they sort of get weighed down with the gel. But this is a liquid wax, so it functions a lot more like a wax would, where wherever you put it, it's gonna stay there. And I love that it's in like a brush form rather than having to use a spoolie in like the potted wax. For me, this is a lot more convenient and easy to use. So this retails for $10.99. Again, pretty steep here on the prices. This is made with shea butter and argan oils, and it says that it will keep it in place up to 16 hours. We're gonna do a wear test on this makeup and confirm that. Um, but first impression wise, this one, again, passed with flying colors. Two products that I'm really excited about from Milani outside of the mascara, which is the reason I wanted to make this video. But other products are kind of stealing the spotlight here. All right, next up, I know ColourPop launches a new palette every five days. And sometimes I'm just not excited about it. Either the colors aren't exciting, the collaboration isn't exciting, but this one was different. This one I am excited about because it's Disney. 
I grew up going to Disney. Family is big into Disney. I went multiple times a year growing up. My dad is Disney obsessed and I hope to carry on the tradition with my kids, although they haven't gone yet and they're three in one but I'm waiting until they're a little bit older because I feel like they're at an age where they feel like they're at an amusement park when they're in Target right now. So I'm gonna kind of hang on to how easily they're entertained and then save Disney for when, you know, we gotta work a little harder. But this is the It's a Small World eyeshadow palette. But I loved It's a Small World. It was like one of my favorite rides to this day. It's one of my favorite rides. And this really did remind me of that experience of like sitting on the boat and the beautiful colors and imagery that you see on that ride. This definitely captures that really well. And then the names of the colors are like dream, laugh, joy, love, and hope, friendship. I don't know, this is just like a really feel good palette. I used just this top section right here, which is very easy and neutral. And then I just did a pop of this on my outer corners. I'm keeping it very natural today, just hanging out with the kids, but I definitely gravitate to shades like this and I love these pops of color. So I'm excited to continue playing around with it and love to see a Disney collaboration. Specifically, it's a small world. Onto the stars of the show. We have the brand new Milani tubing mascara and the brand new L'Oreal telescopic lift. So let's talk through them one by one. Starting with Milani. Again, I'm gonna do a wear test. There's no conclusions here because wear tests with mascara is very important. And with this one, I'm also gonna have to update you how it comes off, if it comes off in tubes, if it's really smudgy. So tubing mascara, I'm very, very picky with. So this is the highly rated Lash Extensions tubing mascara. Retails for $13.99, yikes. Uh, it says it features tube-like polymers that extend every lash, that's what we wanna hear. Shea butter, castor seed oil to help nourish. Flake-free tubing mascara for longer lifted lashes. Claims to be 16 hour clump proof, smudge proof. So the way that this went on reminded me a lot of the Hamish No Budge or No Smudge mascara that I've been raving about. It reminds me a lot of that. It's a very, very wet formula. So as you apply it, you're kind of thinking, this is not for me. If you have straight lashes, you're like thinking, this is not for me because it's weighing your lashes down. You can see them falling as you're applying it because it's a very wet formula. Brush is an almost exact replica of the Thrive Cosmetics brush. Even the color of the packaging, it kind of says, hi, I'm a dupe for the Thrive mascara. I didn't find it to be the same as Thrive. Thrive is a lot drier of a formula in my experience, where I feel like as you're applying it, you're kind of building it up and you can get a lot more curl out of the Thrive mascara than you can with this one. With a formula like this, I would recommend applying it, waiting for it to dry down. It's been a long time now. Um, and then taking a lash curler and once it's completely dry, just giving it a little curl and then that's how you're gonna get a curl out of this type of mascara. If you try to continue to layer it on and get your lashes to curl as you're applying it, it's just gonna move you in the opposite direction because it's gonna get clumpy, it's gonna weigh your lashes down versus just waiting till it's dry. So I'm really excited to find a more accessible tubing mascara because the Hamish one is a K-Beauty brand so you can really only get it on like Yes Style and Style Vana on there. I think it's around seven or eight dollars typically. Um, on Amazon, I want to say it's closer to over $10, but the most important test is whether or not it smudges or flakes and if it removes in tubes. For me to say, this has my tubing stamp of approval, even if it is a little bit on the high end of the price point. So we'll definitely keep you posted on this one. Okay, back at it with another $14.99 mascara. I don't know what's going on with this, but this is the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Washable Mascara. I think a lot of people thought this was a tubing mascara because it says washable. I'm not sure why they put that in there. I guess to say it's not waterproof because there is a waterproof version, but I feel like that is an assumption unless you say waterproof. Anyway, it says it gives lashes instant lift volume and length up to plus five millimeters of visible length and 36 hours wear. This one, I feel like I'm either going to end up loving it or end up hating it. Again, wear time is gonna make a big difference on that decision. This mascara, you're supposed to use this flat end. There's a, there's a flat edge and then an edge with a brush. So you're supposed to kind of apply it with the flat end and then comb it out. Maybe it's just me, but I found it very counterintuitive. Like I found it very difficult. But as I was applying it, I did notice a lot of length with almost no mascara. So I do think the formula has a ton of potential, but the brush was kind of driving me crazy. So I feel like it's either one of those things where I'm gonna get used to the brush and I'm gonna love it, or it's one of those things where I'm gonna wish that this had a different brush because the formula has a lot of potential. 
Um, again, comes down to wear time. I'm going to see how long this lasts, but I found the wand to be frustrating, at least upon first application. I'm going to do a wear test here. I'm going to let you know specifically how these mascaras wear. I'm filming in our guest room and we have some guests coming to stay with us, so it's possible this update will be on my phone because we're about to get this room cleared out and ready, but I will be back soon with an update. Okay, so it hasn't even been an hour and this is the telescopic side already smudging there. So can't say I recommend this one. It's now the very, very, very end of the day. The mascara, um, the L'Oreal mascara continued to get worse, but no smudging and no flaking on the Milani side. So I'm impressed with that. Also this powder kept my makeup so much more intact with like zero shine. Really impressed by the powder. My brows have fallen, nothing crazy. Um, but definitely the powder is the number one from this video. And I would say the L'Oreal mascara is the most disappointing. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these products. And I will see you in January.